course MVP. Ooh, ooh, I'm gonna okay. take someone that you I think is just getting started. Someone who just took their big first swing. Okay. And it's someone that before this season I was very curious to see. I think Carson Wentz is a long shot dark horse Talk MVP. About that NFC East seems to be having a down year. I know the Cowboys and Redskins won last week, but Carson Wentz in four games this season, guys, has thrown for 1,200 yards, eight touchdowns, one interception, 136 consecutive passes without interception. He's thrown at least two touchdown passes in all of those games. I I'll tell you what, the Eagles, if they get things going, they're the defending champions. He is only going to get better as he gets more comfortable in his skin. And if the Philadelphia Eagles can go on a little run here with big games coming up, against the Jaguars, big games coming up against the Rams, and Carson Wentz on national TV puts on a show, we could be looking at still Carson Wentz, MVP candidate. Okay. I know Mahomes, Goff, Gurley, yeah, sure. Breeze, <clears throat> Rodgers. It's so early, man. It's too early. I know. Carson Wentz is that dark horse candidate kind of hanging in the back, and then whoo, second half of the season, let's go. What do you got? I'm going to go with... Uh, quarterback who isn't just getting started. It's a quarterback that's been doing it for a long time. And that's Phillip Rivers. I mean, you got to think about what he's been doing this season. This could be the most talented team he's ever played with. And, you know, I, I get it. He played with LT, who's a Hall of Famer. Ladanian's one of the best to ever do it. But collectively, with Eckler and Gordon and the wide receiver group, and, of course, that defense stepping up and getting Bosa back, he could go on a run like no other. And already this season, the only quarterback with two-plus pass TDs in every game, 115 passer rate, and that's second to only Drew Brees, who's lighting it up. He has 15 TD passes, tied for most through six weeks. And here's the thing. He's on pace for 40 TDs. Mm. His career high, 34. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if he hits the 40 mark and the Chargers start winning and that defense plays well, yep. the spotlight will be on the Chargers. And, of course, it's going to be on the quarterback, who we love to cheer for anyway, and he could be our MVP. I want to see something we've never seen I before. I like that one. I like that one, too. I like both of them. Wentz the story, but crazy. Okay, he almost went this and back. Mm -hmm. We have seen running backs. We've seen a million quarterbacks. We've never seen a wide receiver MVP. Never. In his never seen it. Wow. We've seen a kicker. Redskins, Mark Mosley. Oh, yeah, Mosley. I want to see Adam Thielen. It would be the most unbelievable finish, unbelievable story. Because to do the MVP thing as a wide receiver, you're going to have to do some incredible, incredible things. And that is exactly what he's doing. When you're doing things like 100-yard games and six consecutive that Jerry Rice has never done and Chris Carter, Art Monk, you name it, they've never, ever been done before. That is how you could become an MVP. I can't believe that Rice never won it. I can't believe that any of those guys did. But if you watch these games and the big plays and the big downs, like that one at That's Lambeau crazy. was maybe the play of the year in a game that they tied. Adam Thielen is the guy coming through. I can't even think of a more ridiculous story from imagine? his humble beginnings to MVP of the yeah. league. It's kind of like we've talked about. We'd all like to see a defensive player win MVP someday. I want to see a wide receiver win MVP, and I think he's off to the start. The game. You know, it's funny. Kurt Warner's obviously the story that you would look to and say this, but he was a quarterback. Yeah, sure. Thielen to win it as a receiver, as an undrafted guy out of Mankato would be football life unbelievable. I want to see straight. That's it. That's that is what, I'm what it is. I'm going to go with a defensive player. I feel like my theory here is that all the offense is going to cancel itself out in this new trend of high scoring and no interceptions and like air raid sort of style. You, you're not going to be able to pick up and pick apart that those guys in the offense. So I'm going to go J.J. Watt here, mm -hmm. I love it. who I feel like was robbed of it in his career. I think that he, if the Texans keep playing like they're playing, they will get the spotlight. They could end up winning the division or, you know, getting to the playoffs somehow. And he has... A league tying seven sacks, four forced fumbles. He's second with eight tackles for loss. He's having a tremendous year that is going so far under the radar because the Texans didn't start the year playing as well as they could. Deshaun Watson gets right a little bit more, stops throwing interceptions. They win a couple more games. J.J. Watt should be the MVP incredible. in a dark horse situation. I'm into it. Yeah. All right. Want to do one more? Yeah, let's do one. All right. Come on. Uh, yeah. I can't let class out early today. Question two <laughs> in Journalism 101. There are some teams that you can't take your eyes off of. So what team is the most watchable Week 7 team? There's, there's a thing that I Kyle says the sometimes. proper grammar is which team, which, but that's okay. Team, yeah. What team? What team? Kyle sometimes says he likes to see the world burn. I don't sure, like man. seeing the world burn, but I do like seeing how people react after the world burns. And in Jacksonville, the world is burning right now. The Jaguars are a completely different team, both on the field and in their locker room conversations afterwards than they were in the first few weeks of the season. They beat the Patriots, guys. They, they took care of business with the Patriots, and yet in the last two games, they have averaged giving up 35 points per game, 400 yards per game, 
and 166 yards on the ground. Look, it's all cool to have swagger in August, but I need to see the Jaguars this week in a division game. I need to see them get right quick. I'm fascinated by watching the Bears this weekend against the Patriots because which Bears team are you? Oh. Are you the one that killed Fitzmagic or birthed Brocktober? Because you did both of them. It's perfect timing because just as everyone's saying the Patriots are now unbeatable, everyone's saying the Bears are fake tough guys who got exposed. I want to see the Bears because I believe in them. I'm looking at the Jets because, one, they've already established themselves as the best team in New York. And I remember talking to Jets fans in offseason, and they didn't want to embrace it. I'm like, embrace it for what it is. You guys could do that this season. And here they are right now dominating the New York space. And here's the thing. The Dolphins, the Patriots are both 4-2. and two. They are within reach. So if you're a Jets player, you're Grab saying, it. we're not the old Jets. We can end up winning this yeah. division, and that's no joke. So I want to see these guys because you got this young quarterback, you got the young talent around them in the defense. This is one of the best teams to watch. They're so entertaining. I'll go with the Saints because of your underappreciated storyline. He's 0-4 against the Ravens cool. in his career. This team has put up 76 points the past two games that they've played. Yeah. Saints, Ravens, that'll be a great game. Yeah. All right, we'll be back on Good Morning Football. You guys can tweet.